Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, welcome back to the over-analysis of Shardlight. Picking up where we left off. Danton was right. The government has been lying to everyone all along. This isn't right at all. The people need to know the truth. Well, let's get to it then. Ah, crap. Here comes the fuzz. Oh, well, we tried. Amy Wellard, by order of the aristocracy, you are under arrest for trespassing on private property. So the dude pretty much lists off every single thing we've done up till now. Turns out, we were breaking a bunch of laws. Who would have guessed that this post-apocalyptic wasteland would have such an effective police force? So Amy is now going to jail. Just as soon as she changes out of those clothes. After all, they are stolen. Although, do you think that owner even wants them back now? Knowing that someone who has green lung was wearing them? Huh, you're not even gonna close the door to the super secret vaccine horde, are you guys? Oh well, someone else will do that. Hopefully they're in on the conspiracy, because otherwise they're gonna notice the super secret vaccine horde. Because seriously, this looks like a serious warehouse operation here. I mean, some of those boxes are like, what, up three high on the steel? That's gonna take a forklift to put that up there. Just saying, forklift driver has to be in on the conspiracy. After all, they're not really taking any effort to hide what they're storing here. It says vaccine clearly on it, so anyone working here is bound to notice there's a lot of vaccine laying around. Along with the people who have to come down here to get, you know, the vaccine. And probably the building security, they have to know that there's something important about this room. Yeah. I think this is a perfect example of why I don't believe in any big grand conspiracy theories. They just kind of break down when it gets to the practicals. There's just so many people involved in these big conspiracies. So much potential for leaks and security lapses. It's just hard to keep this stuff secret. But with that said, the rebels did know the vaccine was being stored here, and they had a pretty good idea that it was being hoarded, so... I'm guessing this whole vaccine conspiracy thing's just probably an open secret by now. But either way, Amy's going to jail because... she exposed the obvious. Good evening. Tiberius, you can't let them keep me here. I'm very sorry, my dear, but things are a bit complicated. I came to explain your position. Allow me to sum it up succinctly for you guys. She's boned. Yeah, they're gonna kill her at sunup. Because, you see, they know she's a double agent. Because that crossbow that she was carrying around, you know the crossbow we used to solve a bunch of puzzles? Turned out it was bugged. Which makes you wonder. Duke can bug stuff, but can't give his men modern firearms. Crazy topsy-turvy world. But before Tiberius parts ways with Amy, he has to explain why he's hoarding the vaccine. Then why are you telling people supplies of vaccine are limited? You could help everyone and work on finding a permanent cure. Yes, <laughs> you are correct. And if we were to cure the population and allow our society to thrive once more, what do you suppose would happen next? It would be great. People could live normal lives again, not have to worry about scavenging or dying of the plague. Oh, of course. And when a rival nation caught wind of that prosperity and decided we had something they wanted? Um... We would be attacked. Experience the horror of war all over again. Hmm, interesting. So I guess our villain's just not evil for the sake of being evil. He has his people's best intentions at heart. Hell, maybe he's some kind of Luddite, or like a very angry Amish guy. Just giving his people flintlocks, letting them die of the plague, because he's like, hey, we gotta seem weak and feeble, that way no one will ever attack us. Maybe this all sounds good in Tiberius's head, but as history would tell you, being weak and vulnerable doesn't exactly mean you won't be attacked. In fact, I can imagine some other faction being like, yo, these guys have no technology and they're all dying from a plug that we cured years ago. Let's just go ahead and wipe them out and take their stuff. But I guess logic and reason's the last thing on Amy's mind right now, because she's gonna die unless she can escape from prison. Now I bet you're thinking, how's she gonna do that? Is she gonna knock out the guard? Is she gonna come up with some clever diversion? Are the rebels going to attack? Or is some random bird gonna show up in the windowsill and take out the bars? What are you doing, little guy? Well, I wasn't expecting that. What a smart bird. Yeah, that might be an understatement, Amy. I don't think anyone was expecting a raven to be able to take the bars off of a prison window. You have sent the soldiers to the market district? Yes, Minister Tiberius. They're heading over as we speak. Excellent. And the spy in the Ministry of Medicine? Taken care of. Good. With regards to Miss Wellard's execution, please be sure to tell the firing squad to aim for the head. Don't drag it out. Yes, Minister Tiberius. 
Oh, such unpleasantness. I really take no pleasure in having to do this sort of thing. I just hope it will all be over soon. Good evening to you. Now, I will admit, this is the point that I was beginning to worry about the direction this game was taken. We got super animal ravens here now that are able to bend bars with their beaks. Just saying, it's a strange direction. Making matters all the more troubling, we can now control the raven, it seems. Like, we can direct it to go to places in this courtyard. So I guess we'll use it to distract the guard so we can sneak out and not crush him. Oh, <laughs> Oh damn, don't mess with Amy, she'll kill your ass. And I do believe this is the very first time in a Francisco Gonzalez game that his hero has murdered someone. While in the Golden Wake, Alfie did blow that guy up. But that was more of a coincidence. It wasn't intentional. Nah, Amy straight up intended to kill this man. And she did so rather savagely. So let's go try to catch up with the Revels now. Oh no, Clem! Amy! Is that you? Yes, Clem. I'm here. Vaz. So we found a secret message in the vase or vase, however the hell you want to say it, and dear old Clem is dead. They shot him good. Now I wonder if they did ranked fire or if one of them had a machine gun. But nevertheless, Clem's dead. And to think, we never got to see him stand up. For all we know, he was never wearing pants behind his boots. No. At least it looks like they put up a good fight. I just hope Danton managed to escape. I like how nonchalant Amy is about everything. It's like, yeah, just kill the man. Yeah, just watch one of my friends die. Yeah, a bunch of people are dead here in the government attack. But hey, hope everyone's okay. We'll go out back and like smoke a cig. Maybe take a nap. <sighs> D don't move! I know how to use this thing! Amy? What are you doing here? I'd ask you the same thing. What were you thinking? You could have killed me. Sorry. Pretty brutal in here, huh? I couldn't believe how many guards they sent in. Just hand over the crossbow before you have an accident, would you? Okay, fine. Here. So for the third time in this game, we get a crossbow. And it's the exact same make and model as the previous two. I guess in this post-apocalyptic hellhole, they make only one model of crossbow. Any hoot. Hoodie Kid here has no idea where the Rebels are, so we give him our lottery ticket. You might be thinking, oh, in gratitude for him giving us a crossbow. No, we give him the lottery ticket for another essential item. Thanks, Amy. I wish I had something to repay you with, but all I have are these strings I found back here. It's fine, you don't have to worry about it. Well, I mean, you might as well take them. It's not like I'm really going to do anything with them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, might be a slightly clumsy way of giving us an essential item. Oh well. At least we can use it to solve a puzzle now. This puzzle that I'm solving right now. It tells us a hint as to where to go to next, and then we go there. I guess it's kind of convenient that the Rebels made this very intricate little hidden hint password thing here, then had some string, and then... Uh, who exactly is this message for? I guess... People like Amy, but then Amy's just leaving the puzzle solved here. So if the guard comes back, maybe they'll- Ah, never mind, we're going to meet with the resistance again. But first, we have to check in and see what the villain's up to. Minister Tiberius, I have news. Oh, he totally practiced that. Go on, then. The attack on the rebel base was mostly successful. We suffered a few casualties, but we managed to eliminate the majority of the traitors. Mostly successful? Their leader managed to escape with a few others. She's no pushover, that one. Yes, this much was made clear from the start. I suppose this can be considered a small victory. Although the inconvenience of finding Danton again will be great, at least we've managed to quell their growth. There's like some Batman-Joker dynamic going on here between Tiberius and Danton. Ah, there is one more thing. Yes? I've just checked with Rockwall, and... The prisoner, Wellard, somehow managed to escape. I see. Call her number. But, Minister Tiberius, will that work? Surely she's not foolish enough to... Whether she is or is not is none of your concern. Just do as I say and call her number. And a word of advice. Question my methods again, and I'll have you hanged from my balcony. Is that clear? All right, we get it. You are still the bad guy. We understand. So... That lottery ticket we gave to Hoodie Kid, maybe not the best idea, because now it's going to be called, Tiberius is gone. Yeah, I think we know where this is going. And speaking of knowing where things are going, let's talk to the Rebels. Well, well. If it isn't Little Red Riding Hood. 
I don't know how you found us, but you've got a lot of nerve coming back. <sighs> this same song and dance again with the rebel lady. Jesus, just trust us already so we can move on with the plot. And it's fortunate for us that this lady just takes everything Amy says at face value. She says, hey, I've been to Rockwell, the big supermax prison, and escaped with the help of a bird. And she's like, oh, that, that's very believable. I'm sorry. We've been through so much in such a short amount of time, it's hard to know what to believe. So what did you find out in the Ministry of Medicine? The aristocracy is hoarding vaccine. Crates of it. Enough to treat the whole population. I knew it. Those bastards. All right, we're going to attack the aristocracy right. Take the fight to them? Well, no, we got to save the hoodie kid first because Amy now realizes that perhaps the lottery's rigged and her friend's now being held captive by the aristocracy. So obviously she needs to go old Batman and save his ass. Why are you doing this to me? I haven't done anything wrong. All right, Amy, let's try to save this boy. Let's go ahead and take out that one guard and then like jump down there and karate chop the other one and throw a shuriken at the loudspeaker or something cool like that. All right, this ends now. Ah, it seems I was correct to expect Miss Weller to show herself. Amy, why did you come? G get out of here now. I'm afraid our young man has served his purpose, as you will. Denby! Wow. This game's getting kind of brutal. I was left no choice, Miss Wellard. Do not make his mistake. Don't talk to me, you monster! Now that line don't make no sense, Tiberius. What's Amy's mistake? You were already planning on killing her. Are you gonna do like ultra killer? But anyway, Amy tries to escape and Tiberius sends a guard after her. Going somewhere? Yes, and you're in my way. You really are a feisty one. Thank God this isn't a quick time event. That's all I can say. Well, damn, that's mutually assured destruction right there. And we know Amy is definitely dead because death himself is, well, coming over here. Not now. Not after all this. Relax. I've come to ease your pain. I'm... Never mind, she's fine, and she's in the house with her friends, who aren't arrested. And I'll explain this, but first you have to listen to something I cut out earlier in the video. Though it hardly matters now, I've gotten all the information I need. But how? With this. A gold ball on a string? A clever listening device my soothsayer came up with. It was placed in the handle of your crossbow. I have been tracking you in order to ensure I learned the location of Danton's hideout. You've been spying on me this whole time? Why didn't you just tell me you were listening in? It was a test of loyalty, and unfortunately, you failed. Okay, so now we all on the same page. Tiberius had a listening device. So that means he must know that the dude who is sitting on this couch, right said Fred here, is a known rebel collaborator. Why is he not in prison? And in fact, the same goes for all of Amy's friends. They don't seem to be in any trouble at all. And you might be thinking, oh, oh, maybe they're just monitoring them so they can keep an eye when Amy emerges. They're not. It, it's crazy. It's all crazy. Oh, sure, the game has some passive explanation for it all. What the hell do you suppose she got up to to make the wig head so keen on finding her? I don't know. They've seemed to ease up a bit, at least. They're not patrolling the market district anymore, but the posters are still up. Have any more guards been here? Not after I sent the first one packing. Yeah, what a brutal, tyrannical government where an old man can just tell him to get off my land and it works. I guess he's a Ted Bundy of this apocalypse. Nevertheless, Amy finds out she's been out for three weeks, otherwise known as a month. Which means the vaccine has worn off, so time is of the essence. She has to figure out why death didn't kill her, so let's go talk to the cultist about that. Hi there. Welcome. What may I help you with? I... I... Are you alright? You seem troubled. I don't know. Things have just been so hard and... It's okay. You're safe here. Tell me what's happening. I'm just trying to make things right, but every time I think it's getting better, something worse happens. I didn't want any of this to happen. 
I just wanted to fix my dad's car before I die. So you're dying then? Yeah, I don't have long. Then are you ready to die? I, I think so, yes. I just want to see my loved ones again. Say no more then. Go inside and speak with our leader, Jess. She'll be glad to welcome you to the Acolytes. I'm scared, Claire. That's entirely natural. Just know that you are safe here. Nobody wants to hurt you. You're in welcome arms. May death come to you swiftly, fellow seeker. You know what? I genuinely cannot tell if Amy is just putting on an act or if this is how she sincerely feels. Is she really this downtrodden? Is she really about to give up? I can't tell. It's a bit ambiguous. And that's pretty awesome. But what isn't so ambiguous is that we did see death. So we should talk to Jess about it. And she has a way for us to see death yet again. You need to have the vision. Don't trust the Duchess. Oh well. Anyway, Jess says, hey, drink this mysterious liquid that we put underneath a bench. Now, you may be wondering, is it always out there? Or do they only lay it out for a special occasion? And hopefully it's cold. Or maybe warm. I don't know. I have no idea what is the best temperature for this psychedelic potion we are about to drink on this bench. Oh damn, things are getting freaky. And we'll pick up here on the next episode. Yeah, cliffhanger ending. Cue the outro. Uh... Subscribe! Uh...